Welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to see many lesions of the breast, including benign and malignant ones. We are mostly going to try to differentiate between the types of breast cancer and of benign breast neoplasms. I will try to keep it as straightforward and algorithmic as possible. This is a topic that sometimes generates some doubts because often subtypes of cancer are confused between each other and amongst the many characteristics we end up mixing what actually differentiates between one tumor and another and what's actually just a minor or common characteristic. So I will try to present this in a diagram configuration and try to focus on the main characteristics of each neoplasm especially what differentiates between them. Sometimes people will read, for example, about comedo carcinoma and not realize it's actually a subtype of ductal carcinoma in situ. So we will try to build a clear view of what's a subtype of what and how to differentiate this from that. Before we begin, a disclaimer, this is not meant for medical use. This is only meant to provide an overview of the topic. If you believe you have breast cancer, please seek your physician. If you believe one of your patients has breast cancer, please check the latest protocols. So, now, we could start seeing neoplasm by neoplasm in sequence, so that by the end of it you have no idea what you've seen and how many they are in total, which is what we are not going to do. Or we could start by getting a bird's eye view of all the major cancer types that we are going to see. This way, you can have a rough idea of what could be a possibility when looking for breast cancer. We are going to clarify that fibrocystic changes are not a neoplasm, much less cancer. We are going to see three major benign neoplasms, intraductal papilloma, fibroadenoma, and phyllodes tumor. And we're going to see two major malignant breast neoplasms, ductal carcinoma and lobular carcinoma, both which can present in situ or as invasive cancer, and all the subtypes of ductal carcinoma, tubular carcinoma, mucinous carcinoma, medullary carcinoma, inflammatory carcinoma, and papillary carcinoma, for the invasive ductal carcinoma and comidocarcinoma, cribriform carcinoma, solid, micropapillary, papillary, and mixed carcinoma for the ductal carcinoma in situ, as well as the Paget's disease of the nipple presentation of the ductal carcinoma in situ. If this seems a bit confusing, worry not, because we are going to try to streamline it. So, let's start by getting out of the way what's not a tumor. So, we also have a benign condition of the breast known as fibrocystic changes. Fibrocystic changes are not actually necessarily proliferative. They have both proliferative and non-proliferative elements, such as fibrosis and cysts, such as it's in the name, fibrocystic changes, as well as apocrine metaplasia and microcalcifications. So, these elements such as fibrosis and cysts are all non-proliferative. You don't necessarily have to have proliferation. Now, of course, fibrocystic changes can be a risk factor for cancer, particularly if atypia is present, but not necessarily. In fact, it's present in up to 50% of women throughout their lives. Fibrocystic changes are the most common cause of breast tenderness in women. It's usually influenced by menstrual cycle variation. So, if the pain or the lumps are heavily influenced by the menstrual cycle, we are most likely talking about fibrocystic changes and not a tumor. Next, of course, there are exceptions to any rule, however, benign breast tumors are usually present in premenopausal women, while malignant breast tumors 
are more commonly present in postmenopausal women. So, if your patient is premenopausal, she is more likely to have an intraductal papilloma or a fibroadenoma. If your patient is postmenopausal, she is more likely to have a cancer, a malignant neoplasm, or phyllodes tumor, which is the exception here, and it's the benign condition, the benign neoplasm, more commonly present in postmenopausal women. An intraductal papilloma, then, is essentially a benign papillary growth into the lumen of one of the ducts, intraductal papilloma. What draws our attention here is that when you see bloody nipple discharge, you should usually think either intraductal papilloma or a papillary carcinoma. The intraductal papilloma, of course, is much more common. In fact, the intraductal papilloma is the most common cause of blood nipple discharge in women aged less than 50 years. How then can I differentiate between the intraductal papilloma and the papillary carcinoma if both of them have a blood nipple discharge? Well, essentially, if they are differentiated. Do you have the myoepithelial cells around the epithelium, which are the cells that contract to send the milk forward? If you do have, then the architecture is preserved and it's most likely a papilloma. If you only have the epithelium, then it's most likely a papillary carcinoma. The fibroadenoma is the most common tumor of the breast in women with less than 35 years and is the classical benign tumor. It's commonly described as well circumscribed and composed pretty obviously by fibrous tissue and glands. The phyllodes tumor, the one more common in older women, is usually described as leaf-like. Its microscopic growth pattern makes it resemble leaves due to the high amount of fibrous tissue, at least resemble leaves for a pathologist. <laughs> Now let's get to the malignant neoplasms, breast cancer. Breast cancer is most common in the upper outer quadrant of the breast. That's no coincidence, it's simply because that's the region with the highest density of breast tissue. So, when talking about breast cancer, the first question we should ask is, where does it originate? Is it a disease of the ducts, the portion responsible for taking milk to the nipple, or is it a problem from the lobules, the breast portion responsible for forming milk? If it originates from the ductal epithelium, it's a ductal carcinoma. If it originates from the lobules, it's a lobular carcinoma. Pretty simple so far. Now, next step, we should ask, what about the basement membrane? Do we still have an intact basement membrane? In both cases, if the basement membrane is intact, we have an in situ ductal carcinoma, we have a ductal carcinoma in situ or a lobular carcinoma in situ. If the cancer has invaded the basement membrane, we have an invasive ductal carcinoma or an invasive lobular carcinoma. 
The ductal carcinoma is way more common than the lobular one, around 80% of all cases, and it's also much more common in men. When we have breast cancer in men, it usually happens on the only portion of the breast men have, the conducting part, or the ducts. Men are not made to produce milk, and so they do not have developed lobules. When men have breast cancer, it's ductal carcinoma. Ductal carcinoma is usually unilateral and unifocal, that is, just one single lesion, whereas lobular carcinoma can be bilateral and multifocal in up to 20 to 40 percent of cases. That is, particularly with lobular carcinoma in situ, it's quite common to find multiple lesions in both breasts. Ductal carcinomas come from the ducts and so usually resemble ducts in their shape. Lobular carcinoma, on the other hand, has a loss of e cadherin which is an adhesion protein. Therefore, the cells can't stay bound to each other and microscopically it's usually seen invading tissues in a single file or a cell row, that is, lines of cells. The ductal carcinoma in situ can have many presentations. However, the most common one is the comedocarcinoma, in which the growth of the neoplastic tissue into the lumen of the duct causes the innermost portions to necrose and die, meaning it's a presentation in which there is central necrosis, and there's also other forms such as the cribriform or sleeve-like presentation. When a ductal carcinoma in situ extends through the inner surface of the duct until it reaches the nipple and then causes nipple ulceration and erythema, it becomes known as Paget's disease of the nipple. Therefore, when we see Paget's disease of the nipple, there is always an underlying malignancy. Paget's disease of the nipple is not an entirely different type of cancer. Rather, it's just a presentation of the ductal carcinoma in situ. Finally, the invasive ductal carcinoma has many subclassifications. It's most known for causing dimpling of the skin. This happens usually when it presses on the Cooper ligaments, causing them to retract and pull the skin. It can be classified as tubular carcinoma, which has a great prognosis, mucinous carcinoma, which is marked by a large amount of mucus between the neoplastic cells, which is actually good because it prevents dissemination of the neoplastic cells and confers it a good prognosis, medullary carcinoma, which is marked by a dense lymphocytic infiltrate, inflammatory carcinoma, which has a poor prognosis precisely because the inflammatory appearance of the breast is due to occlusion blockage of the lymphatics of the breast. If the lymphatics are already invaded by neoplastic cells, then metastasis is just a step away, which explains the poor prognosis of the inflammatory carcinoma. It also presents with the classical podorange, which is, again, from the tumor impinging on the Cooper ligaments. Finally, we have the papillary carcinoma, what should we know about the papillary carcinoma? Essentially, just that together with the intraductal papilloma, they are the causes of bloody nipple discharge. I hope this explanation has helped to clear out some confusion about breast cancer and other benign neoplasms. If you've liked it, please consider leaving a like. Thank you for your attention on this video and until the next topic.